In this video, I'm going to complete the set of 5 mistakes players make and focus on the scout class. For all you Battlefield 1 players out there, do you agree with this list? If I missed something out, make sure you let me know down in the comments. I'd like to give an additional thank you to Corey for providing me with some of that M1903 sniper gameplay, really awesome stuff. It's a good weapon and awesome to see so many headshots. Check out his channel down in the description. At number 1 we have the biggest crime of scout players in pretty much every battlefield game, but in BF1 it is at its worst, not spotting enemy players. As a scout player you are often in a unique position with a wide angle on the objective in front of you, and with that you can spot loads of enemies and in turn they will be spotted for your friendly players. This makes the job way easier for those players that have chosen to get up into the action and ultimately make capping objectives a little bit easier. In Battlefield 1, you get that really powerful spotting flare as well, and if you're not using it that often, you're making a mistake. Use it whenever you can. If you're teamed up with a support player, you can also resupply those things really fast. I often fire one behind me to make sure I'm not getting flanked, then I can check the minimap out to see if I've got enemies behind me, and then I fire one in front onto the objective that I'm firing at, my teammates then benefit from everything being spotted around them and I can also see stuff on the minimap. Make use of it, it's really really effective and it's something I always see scout players missing out on. It's a mistake not to use it. The second mistake scout players make in Battlefield 1 is not making use of their sweet spot. I'm personally not a fan of the sweet spot in Battlefield 1, however it's a really powerful tool and I think it makes sense to take advantage of it. Work out what sniper rifle you use the most, learn its sweet spot, and I've included a little graphic that scrolls down through the various sweet spots to help you out if you're unsure. Sweet spots guarantee one-shot kills on enemy players, which if used correctly can provide a very strong advantage. Most scout players in Battlefield 1 use it randomly and only get sweet spot kills by accident. Surely it would make sense to find a position that was the exact range of the sweet spot and then just get one-shot kills and it can be really useful in a lot of situations. The third mistake scout players make in Battlefield 1 is taking the wrong rifle. Sometimes it makes sense to take the M1903 sniper, but not always. You have to switch it up and take the appropriate rifle for the situation, and as any experienced sniper player will know, there is a lot of variation within the scout class itself. You can take a weapon such as the SMLE Marksman or Ross Marksman if you want a weapon that will perform under most circumstances, but as I mentioned before, try your best to pick the best weapon for the engagement distance you intend to fight in give yourself an advantage over the enemy players. At number 4 we have gadget selection. I mentioned earlier that the spotting flare is really powerful, and in my opinion it should be something you always use. The second gadget slot in the scout class is completely up for debate though, and if it was up to me I'd have to decide depending on the map. Most people just run with K bullets, and that's it, but I think you're much better off switching gadgets for the occasion. As I mentioned in the Medic Mistakes video, you can make a different preset within each class, allowing you to switch quickly between different loadouts. This is really useful, especially if you're in a rush, and you don't want to spend 5 minutes in between lives working out how to change your class and placing different gadgets in the slots. Just have the preset, switch over to it, and you're done. Finally, we have a mistake that I see loads of sniper players making, and it's the number one cardinal sin for any long-range player. Do not go prone. Going prone for any extended period of time in an FPS game is not a good move, unless you have some serious cover. In Battlefield 1, you can get the advantage of a sniper shield, but in all honesty, that thing is really easy to snipe through, and only protects you from one direction. It also makes you far easier to see, in my opinion, because if there's a sniper shield, which is easy to see, there's almost certainly a sniper behind it, there's a nice little hole on the front of it that you can snipe through and get yourself an instant headshot. It's also an explosive magnet, as anti-tank grenades will explode on impact, as if it were a vehicle. So maybe you're thinking that you want to do long range sniping, but how is that possible if you don't go prone? Well the secret is to never give your position away and reposition after every shot if you can. All good scout players do that and it's really rare to see any of the best players lying on the ground trying to snipe people because they're moving around, sniping people still, but making sure that they don't get hit in return. Be active, make yourself harder to hit, and if you think you might lose an engagement, relocate. Before we end the video, I have a final tip for scout players. If you're getting suppressed, you don't have to keep on trying to shoot the guy with the LMG. Relocate and try getting a different angle on them. I know this is something that sounds so simple and fairly patronizing, but I'm always making this mistake and it's really, really silly. I'll be shooting somebody with my sniper rifle, they've got an LMG bipodded, I can't hit them because of suppression, and I'll keep trying to hit them, I'll keep trying to force my crosshair over them. 
when in fact what I should be doing is relocating and taking them out from a different angle. It works a treat, especially on maps such as Caporetto, which is fairly long range, but there are a couple of different ways to flank round enemies. You get a lot of bypunning enemies on that map and a lot of snipers. It's very useful if you can relocate and gain the advantage. So hopefully you enjoyed these five mistakes that scout players make. If there's anything extra you want to leave down below, let me know. I finished the series now, that's all four classes done. I'm going to be focusing more on news, I think, for the next couple of weeks, just because the next Battlefield game is right around the corner, and I think I've exhausted pretty much everything there is to talk about in Battlefield 1 so far. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.